How's it going, Eliminators? Today, we're gonna to be working on a snowblower that had the engine fall off due to the engine bolts coming loose. So with that being said, let's get right into it. So I just picked up this Craftsman 1032 snowblower here from a customer's house, and he said that the engine bolts had come loose and that the engine had essentially come off of the snowblower while he was using it to clear his driveway. Now, as far as the engine goes, I had done a carb clean and basic service on this engine a few years ago. He's had no issues with the engine itself. So fast forward a few years after that, and like I said, my customer was using it. I think he said that he may have noticed that the engine was shaking a little bit, but there was a big snowstorm and he thought, you know, maybe I can just go clear the driveway and then he would call me at a later time. And that's when the engine just completely came off of the base of the machine. So the bolts here that you just see clamped in place now, we did that just to make sure that nothing was bent and everything lined up properly but all of the bolts dropped down into the bottom area. So we flipped this up and removed the access panel and all of the bolts were there, luckily. But we have to keep in mind that when there's only four engine mounting bolts on these older Tecumseh engines, these things do vibrate a lot. So as soon as one gets loose, you're now putting more stress and especially vibration on the other three. And on the original engine mounting bolts, they only use a lock washer with a regular nut. And the problem with a lock washer is as soon as that nut backs away and releases some of the pressure off of the lock washer, the lock washer essentially does not do its job anymore. And the nut is allowed to just completely back itself off. So instead of using a standard nut with a lock washer, what I like to use are these reverse lock nuts. Now these are super cool. They have a divot in the side of the nut and a reverse lock nut actually has distorted threads at the center of the nut itself. So what that allows it to do is you can essentially start this nut from either side. So you can uh, tighten it down this way or you can flip it and tighten it down this way. So as I said, the drawback to using something like a lock washer is once that's compressed, sure, it does lock because what it does is it keeps pressure between the nut and the surface that you're tightening it down to. So basically it, uh, it tries to expand and it prevents the nut or the bolt from backing it itself off. But again, like I said, the issue with a lock washer is that in the event that something does vibrate and back itself off, once this is expanded, just like that right now, that does no longer work. And moving on to something like a nylock nut here, what you have is this nylon right there. That is what the threads of your bolt go through. And the issue with nylock nuts is this nylon can get brittle as it ages. And also if you're using something like a nylock nut near any source of heat, that nylon in there, that white plastic material can melt away. And again, now you just have a regular nut. So that's why I like to use these reverse lock nuts. These things are awesome. And then on this machine here, as the engine started to vibrate and rattle and move around, obviously, he ended up shredding the impeller or the auger belt here at the front and the drive belt. Well, I'm gonna have to take a closer inspection of that, but if I'm going to change belts, I might end up changing both at the same time. And basically, like I said, I'm just using those locking players there to kind of mock everything up and make sure that nothing was bent or out of place. Everything seems to go back together normally. We have the bolts that come up through, then we have some spacers that go on each bolt, and then we have this lifting plate here, and we just have that taped into position. Now, we won't be able to set the engine down on top of these locking players, unfortunately, because the thickness of them ends up being 
just too much. So our threads would only come to about there. I've already measured that. Now there's one thing that I did wanna mention. If you find yourself in a situation like I have where there's an engine that has rattled loose, first thing I looked for when I picked this unit up were cracks along the sump or the base of the engine here because you guys have to remember this is just cast and with the engine bolts loose, this thing was rattling around on the snowblower there. So you have to wonder, is there going to be a little bit of damage? Any of this oil, you guys can see here, a little bit of oily film, that's coming from the crankcase breather tube. So that's totally normal on these older Tecumseh snowblower engines. I don't see any cracks along the base here. We're not leaking any oil, which is good. So he got lucky. This engine is not damaged as far as I can see. And like he said, it ran even when it was rattling around. Take your time, do a quick inspection. We can see that the other side of the engine here is totally dry as it should be and everything looks good to me. Okay, so I've switched over to my locking forceps. Check that out. So they're a little bit thinner and I'm just gonna try to drop the engine down on three and then I can reach up under here real easy and slide that bolt in. Like I said, I just wanna have them kind of like studs sticking out so that I don't have to reposition the engine and keep reaching up and doing one by one. So now that I have these two bolts tightened up on the right side, you'll notice I'm not using washers because I really don't think there's a need for them. They shouldn't move. But now that I have these tight, I can flip the engine up. And again, I just made sure that the pulleys are lined up, which they are. So I'll be able to flip this thing up to get the other two on the side that has the chain drive because it'll be easier for me to tighten those up when this thing's in the air. Okay, so I'm filming this at the end of the video, but I'm gonna insert this clip probably near the midpoint. I just wanted to address a couple things because I don't want anybody to have any confusion. The reason that the threads are longer on this bolt than they are on that one is because of the way the sump is designed. You can see it's a higher height at the front and it's lower at the back, so more threads stick out there. And the second thing that I wanted to talk about is this lifting plate. So it looks a little weird that you would have this space here. You would think that maybe it would be better if it was rotated so that it would be flush to the back of the engine and then it would come forward more to cover these holes. But if you Google Craftsman 1032 snowblowers, you'll see the photos of a whole bunch of different snowblowers and I can put some photos up on screen so that you guys can see them as well. All of these lifting plates come flush to the front of the engine and then they have this area at the back. And I double checked that to make sure that that was the way that that lifting plate was installed. And it does seem a little weird that you would have these holes here exposed because you wouldn't want water to get in underneath the drive area because some of that water could get onto the friction plate and the rubber friction disc and cause a drive slipping issue. So that's just the way that these are designed. They do have multiple holes drilled into the snowblower base. And basically it's just so that you can mount a variety of different size engines onto the same snowblower base. And uh, on this particular design, these have a hole on either side that are left open. So I might end up putting some Gorilla Tape or something over there just to cover that hole so that no water gets in there. But I can assure you, this is the way that it's supposed to go together, even though it kind of looks a little weird. Okay, so check it out. Locking forceps work amazing. So just like I had hoped, I would have been able to lock my forceps onto the bolts to hold them in place and then drop the engine down as if they were studs already attached. The issue was, as I was dropping the engine down, I ended up just bumping the bolts down a little bit more. So I was able to just kind of reach under and push them up a bit. Now on this side, let's see if I can get a shot. We got the chain drive under here, see that? So on this side, it's a little bit more open, but over here, way more stuff in there to get in the way. So I was hoping that this side would work and it does, 100%. The locking players, like I said, were too thick, but forceps work awesome. So I just got a locking nut started there. I'll get this one started here. Yeah, so that worked out pretty good. 
Now the thing about a snowblower engine is when we're bolting this up, there's gonna be a little bit of play. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is push the engine as far forward as possible on both sides. So you're gonna kinda of walk it forward because what we're trying to do here is line up the crankshaft pulley on the outside here. And we're trying to line that up to the impeller pulley down below. So that's perfectly lined up. And then same thing with the drive pulley right here. We're trying to line that up with the drive pulley on the friction plate down below. So everything's lining up as it should. Like I said, big thing was to make sure that nothing was bent or twisted. Once I get this engine bolted in and tightened down, then I can split the front half from the back half of the unit just to open it up and then do the belts that way. These things are super easy. If you wanna see how to change belts on a snowblower, I do have a video on that. You can click in the top right of your screen to see that. Apart from that, the only thing that we took off was the fuel tank, two bolts here, so that it was a little bit easier because I wanted to lift up on something metal and not the edge of a plastic fuel tank because I didn't want to break that. And I also had to remove the two 3 8 bolts here for the throttle control because on this one, the throttle bolted up to the console instead of down near the carburetor right there. So that was pretty much the only thing I had to disassemble and reassembly on this is super easy. I can also remove the tape here. We used just to hold the engine spacer in place because again, that thing was kind of shifting around. So I'll be able to rip this out now. So like I said, with the machine flipped up, now we can actually have access at the bolts a little bit easier because again, you know, when you're trying to do this thing upside down, it gets a little tricky. And as I'm rotating this rubber friction wheel around, you guys can see there is a large portion that has broken away. So we're going to be replacing this and it is an MTD 05080A. And like I said, we're inspecting everything before it goes back. Again, this is why we change belts at the same time. So this drive belt definitely needs to be replaced with the auger or impeller belt as well. Okay, so the Craftsman 1032 snowblower here is all fully serviced. The engine is now mounted using reverse lock nuts instead of the old style lock washers. We've changed the oil, new spark plug. We had to do a carb clean on this thing because we took it outside. And even though it fired up, it was kind of sputtering at a higher RPM. So we went ahead and cleaned the carb. This thing runs great now change the friction wheel as well as, like I said, two brand new Kevlar belts for the impeller and the drive belt there. Also added some double zero grease to the front gearbox and then used white lithium grease to lubricate all the friction points. So this machine is ready to be returned back to my customer. And like I said, today's video was pretty much just to cover the use of reverse lock nuts instead of lock washers. Well, that's gonna wrap up today's video. If you guys enjoyed the video, think about leaving me a thumbs up. You know, it really helps me out. You can click here to subscribe and click over here to watch one of my previous videos. I upload every single week. So be sure to stop on by next week, check channel out for new content. And as always guys, thanks for watching.